Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Wakila Adesoya and I am live on Mustaina TV. Keep watching Mustaina TV. Don't touch that dial. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اسْجُدُوا لِلرَّحْمَنِ قَالُوا وَمَا الرَّحْمَنُ أَنَسْجُدُ لِمَا تَأْمُرُنَا وَزَادَهُمْ نُفُورًا تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا سِرَاجًا وَقَمَرًا مُنِيرًا وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما مستعينا When the Prophet Hassan saw this ability in him, the Prophet Hassan told him, Go. I want you to learn the language of the Jews. I want you to learn Hebrew. I want you to learn the language of the Jew. Because I don't trust. Whenever they write, and the process are used to depend on them. So they say, I'm, I don't trust them whenever they, they, they write, or whenever they read letters for me. I don't trust them. I want you to learn their language. And in 15 days, some said in 17 days, he mastered the language. Not only that, the Prophet Sam asked him did he, if he knew the Syrian language. He said he did not. The Prophet Sam asked him to learn. And he also learned that one in a very short time. Some said he learned that in 12, 12 days. He became proficient. So the point, brothers and sisters, is that Zaid ibn Thabit developed other capacity that made him to become special. Up till today, we are still enjoying the service of Zaid ibn Thabit because each time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would invite Zaid ibn Thabit to record the Quran. So he became the honorable you know, secretary, scribe who wrote down the Quran. And after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also died, during the time of Abu Bakr, when the Quran wanted to be compiled into a book form, he was the one that was given the responsibility. 
The same thing when the Quran was going to be standardized, the Uthmanic copy of the Quran, the one that we still have today in our hand, is the product of the service of Zaid ibn Thabit. But what is the lesson inherent in the story of Zaid ibn Thabit? At the initial stage, he wanted to excel in the, on the field of battle. But he had a mother who understood the ability and the special blessing of her child. And he directed her child to a different path, which made him even perhaps, you know, more fulfilled than he could ever be. So this is a great lesson that for us mothers, first and foremost, we should ensure that we raise our children every single skill that will be of benefit to our children we should let them have it when they are young don't underrate and overlook any skill this is what we need in the muslim ummah we need children who will raise with excellent skills and who will compete and who will surpass and excel their peers and their generation so we need mothers who are so devoted who are caring and who are also far-sighted in ensuring that their children learn the skills that will be of service to them in the future this was the example that the mother of Zaid ibn Thabit gave us we owe to Zaid ibn Thabit the service the fact that each time you pick a copy of the Quran there is no house Zaid ibn Thabit will not get a reward for it. And there is no how the mother of Zaid ibn Thabit will not get a reward for it. Because she was the one who showed the path to his son, to her son. So what path are we showing to our son? Ask yourself. Each time you sit in front of the TV and you are watching um, Z World and you are watching African magic with your children, ask whether this will be the choice of the mother of Zaid ibn Thabit. If the mother of Zaid ibn Thabit had, you know, chosen that for his son, will the son have achieved what he did? Certainly not. So it is very important for us to also review how we are raising our children and what do we expect them to become. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all our children and make them excel and make them good examples for the Muslim. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all our children useful for Islam and may Allah gather all of us together in the Jannah. Wa sallallahu ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sallam wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا قيل لهم اسجدوا للرحمن قالوا وما الرحمن أنسجد لما تأمرنا وزادهم نفورا تبارك الذي جعل في السماء بروجا وجعل فيها وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار مستعينا Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So welcome back to the second segment. Last segment we talked about uh, the first two life stages, which is the uh, young and single and also uh, just married. So this stage, uh, for this segment, we'll be talking about the remaining two stages, which is parental stage and uh, the retirement stage. For the parental stage, we're talking about age 36 to 55. And we all know that it's not just about you and your spouse. Or well, now the children are also coming to the picture and uh, the key activity here is uh, family spending 
transportation, feeding, school fees, housing, and all what have you, they all come to play to impact on um, on, the, on what, what they do, uh, you know, every day. And so what we are saying that while doing all this, we should also invest. And while investing, try to diversify further from um, investments that will uh, give you capital appreciation into uh, in, in, into investment that will give you um, capital preservation, also give you um, um, good returns. And so this will offer you the opportunity to, you know, not only um, preserve your capital, but also give you good returns that will help you, you know, sustain all those uh, family expenses that come on your on, on, on the way. And um, talking about the, the retirement stage, which is age 56 to 55. So um, it is expected that at this stage, you should be, um, you're expected to just plan to retire after a life of great achievements. So research was uh, rather shown that um, instead of relying on yourself, which is the ideal thing at this stage, what you will see here is reliance on others and also or reliance on pensions that will not meet up with realities of today. So uh, what we are now saying for those that are in this state, what we recommend for them is that they should go out of um, uh, those aggressive investments or rather focus on investment that will give them capital protection. That is those, uh, the investment that will preserve, uh, so sort of protect their capital. We also uh, recommend to them that they should also put in uh, mechanisms that will help them to to, um, to uh, distribute their wealth and also share their wealth and maybe I mean, establish an estate or a trust um, for, them, for, for their families. Thank you so much for listening. I mean, Allah accept our Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Number five, find an hour a day for yourself. Find an hour a day to do something for yourself. I know this is hard for us as women because we have to do so many things. And we're mothers, we're wives, we're sisters. Where's the time for yourself? Finding time for yourself is crucial. It is crucial because they say you cannot pour from an empty cup. So find at least one hour where you fill your own cup, doing something for yourself, mothering your soul, mothering your inner child, loving your inner child, or just sleep. It's as simple as that. I, for one, take an hour a day for myself. And looking at my schedule, the only time I can find for myself is very early in the morning during Tajud. So I make it a point to wake up between 4.30 or 5 a.m. every day. That time is crucial for my productivity for the rest of the day. Because that one hour that I sit by myself, I pray, I cry, I reflect, I laugh, and I just hang out with Allah and the angels. That's the way that I like to do it. At least I get to hang out with myself and think about my day. I journal, I recite the Quran, and I say a prayer for the day. I look back on my behaviors and I set daily goals at that time. I would tell you for a fact that every day that I'm able to wake up for Tajud and take one hour or 45 minutes for myself before the house wakes up it's always the most productive day that i have so i've consistently done it for almost eight years and it's something that i would recommend for you to take an hour a day for you it could be strolling in the evening walking in the park just locking the kids out of your room and taking a nap or something anything for yourself so that's my tip number five. Take an hour a day to do something for yourself. Until next time, be kind to yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're welcome again to Musta'ina TV, the marital seg segment where we talk about marital issues, marital affairs. And this time around, we are focusing on the rights and duties of husband and wife. We were talking about how the husband can be of help to the wife. And uh, we had actually talked about how the wife 
can be of help to the husband with respect to the responsibilities upon him. Allah Ta'ala has equally made it known to us that the wife too, just uh, the husband too, just like the wife can be of help to the husband, the husband too can be of very immense uh, help to the wife with respect to fulfilling his and her responsibilities. Therefore, we shall be looking at Dawrul Zawji, the role of the husband, fi ta'awuni ma'az zawjati fi adai mas'uliyatiha, the role of the husband in supporting the wife towards executing her responsibilities. Number one, al muda'abatu wal mudahakatu lil awlad. The husband can be of help by helping the wife to play with the children. In most cases, the person that plays with the children is the wife. Only on few occasions, when the husband is around, few hours, when the husband is around, and at times when some husbands come back home, they go straight to bed after eating or showering, taking a bath. They hardly create a time to interact, to play with the children. And when he goes to the mosque, he goes alone. The children are at home forming another jama with their mother. Some do that. The husband can be of relevance to the responsibilities upon the wife by, you know, giving attention to the children, playing with them, giving the wife certain respite to do some other things that will not distract her. Number two, solving mushkilats, solving problems. Certain problems can come up. It can be in the kitchen. It can be in the bedroom. It can be assignments for children from school. And it can be even as small as rectifying the errors in your shoes, in their shoes, in their school bags. You solve problems for them at home. Plumbing work, you know, all those things they, they do happen many times. In addition to that, Al Musa'adatu wa Khidmatul Ahl, supporting, helping the family as a whole, you know, giving them support and uh, rendering yourself as a, a servant for their needs. The Prophet was reported to have said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي The best of you are the best to their families. وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And I'm the best of you to my own family. So the Prophet goes as, as much as helping sew the shoe, helping scrape the bottom of the pot for it to be used again. This is one of the things that the husband can do to help the wife. And lastly, تَوْفِيرِ الْخَادِمِ تَوْفِيرِ الْخَادِمِ Supporting the housemaid at times. Giving the housemaid an idea about how to solve certain assignment given to her by a master or to him by his master. That is your wife. If you have housemates, house helps. You can help them too. You can give them a lifting hand. These are the areas that the husband can be of great support and influence to actually uh, helping the wife survive and achieve the responsibilities put place upon her my dear brothers and sisters in islam we shall be looking again into another aspect al hukuku al mutabadala and this is we will we'll we'll take care of this in the next episode where you know a re reciprocative right you do this i do this this can be to you this can be to me we'll be looking at that in the next episode we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spare our life beyond then السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of Mustaina on the Streets. I'm Kawthar Adelukwe. I am Black Child. My name is Fuad. 
and this is Mustaina on the streets. And as you all know, we'll be going live on the street to ask people questions that are related to Islam. It's basically for Muslims and non-Muslims. Let's get to it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Fauziat Orusholu, popularly known as Coach Fauzi. You're welcome to Mustaino TV on the street, where we ask Muslims and non-Muslims questions about Islam. It promises to be educative, entertaining and informative. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, can I meet you? I'm Zainab Abdullahi Abibaz. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Faidat. Yes, um, Waikum Salam Salabakatu. I'm Siki Simbia Dam Lola. My name is Medina Akonji. Waikum Salam Salabakatu. My name is Ali Balogun Jumai. Yes, Waikum Salam Warahmatullah. I'm Sister Sakina. Waikum Salam Salabakatu. Yes, of course. My name is Rofia Tyler. All right. Welcome to Mr. Ina TV on the street. And then we have questions for you to you know to answer so number one question is what are the pillars of islam okay we have five pillars of islam we have salat zakat psalm hajj and i can't remember the last one maybe you should help me um pillars of islam i think we have five pillars of islam um to perform salat to pay zakat to fast in the month of ramadan to go to hajj there is money and well, that's what I can think of. <laughs> um, we have five pillars of Islam. Um, one of it is um, your five prayers. Okay. Another one is Ramadan. Another one is Zakat. Another one, ah, can't remember the two. <laughs> okay, we have five pillars of Islam: Iman, Salah, Zakat, Hajj, and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Iman. Faith, Saum, Aj, and fasting. Um, we have five pillars of Islam in Islam. We have five pillars of Islam. First, uh, uh, Saum, um, Asam, Zakat, Salat, Aj, and um, the last one is. Um, let me just say, testify that there's no good. There are five of them. Shahada, Salat, Zakat, Saum, and Hajj. Pillars of Islam are Iman, Salat, Zakat, Saum, and Hajj. All right. Who was the first female martyr in Islam? Khadija? I don't think I know that. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, is that not uh, Sophia? Yeah? Ah, should I say Sumaya? Am I right? Her name was uh, Sumaya. Wow, that's um. <laughs> no idea. Okay, the third one. There's an act Allah really do not like, but he permits it. There's what? There's an act Allah does not like, but He permits it. He permits. Was it fornication? I don't. I don't have an idea. Um, hat, dressing. Is it dressing or what? I don't think I knew that, guys. <sighs> Talak. He really do not like it, but He permits us to do it. Mm. I don't know about that too, but it's divorce. Allah forbid one act, but he permit us to do it. Sin. Okay, the last one, but not the least. Jazakum la Kairan, what is the meaning of it and what is the response why you say it? Oh, the meaning of Jazakum la Kairan is may the Almighty Allah reward you abundantly. And the reply is wa antum for Jazakum la Kairan. Thank you very much. I don't actually know the response, but I know it is when someone does something for you. Like, like, is like giving thanks or something like that. Okay. And like, do we respond right? Yes. Um, I don't know that. Um, I know it's uh, thank you, may God bless, may Allah bless you. I don't know the response. I mean, why Allah reward you? Why may Allah reward you? 
Okay, Jazakumullah Khayan means may Allah encourage you in goodness and khair. And we respond by saying Amin wa antum for Jazakumullah Khayan. Thank you. Oh, the meaning of Jazakumullah Khayan is may the Almighty Allah reward you abundantly. And the reply is wa antum for Jazakumullah Khayan. Thank you very much. So Jazakumullah Khayan is like may Allah reward you with good. And then the response is wa iyakum and to you as well. Thank you very much, Ma. You're welcome. Jazakumullah Khairan. I am sure you all enjoy today's edition of Mr. Ina TV on the streets. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mr. Ina TV. Follow us on all our social media handles at Mr. Ina TV. Assalamu alaikum to Mr. Ina TV. So